It's gone by fast, but it's already round three of the Small City vs. Big City Nickel Challenge with Robin Hood Coins. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure. That's right, we're already on round three of this Nickel Battle Series. Robin Hood Coins put it on, as you know. He got some small city nickel boxes. I got the big city nickel boxes. We've been kind of seeing which ones produce the better nickels. And I'll tell you, so far for two rounds, it's a no contest. Obviously, the small city had a better second box with 40 and a half points, but still lost to the big city. Matter of fact, no early finds at all, really, other than a couple of 30s nickels for the small city. Now, for the big city, we've got a couple of buffaloes in two boxes and a silver. So that's good. Still no V-nickels between the two, and the big cities have not scored a 30s nickel yet. Yet. Right now, the lead is 12 and a half points. That's a big lead. I don't think the small city, even if they destroy the big city this box, can take the series, but can they at least get out one of the wins? That'd be good for them. Enough said. We're going to crack into these rolls. I've already checked. Both boxes are circulated. As usual, doesn't look very promising on top for the small city, but... Doesn't matter what's on the outside, it matters what's on the inside. Again, I want to remind everyone it's the last box. So, an American Silver Eagle is up for first prize, and another Walking Liberty Half Dollar is up for second prize. Remember to leave a comment on this video, be a subscriber to Robin Hood Coins, and you can participate in this giveaway as well. Of course, all the rules for the contest and giveaway will be on his channel, as he's the one conducting the giveaways. I'm just merely performing the hunts. Speaking of performing the hunts, Let's not waste any more time, and let's get to hunting. Roll them right in the small city box. Gonna have our first 40s nickel find. It's a 1946, one year off of silver. We'll take it though. First 40s find of the box to go along with two 1958 Denvers. Roll number 10. We added a 1954 Denver to the mix, and I bring in because look at this. Yet another 1939 nickel. This is the third time out of three boxes we found at least one. Will there be a mint mark on the back? Because if there is, 39S and a 39 Denver are both key dates. And if there's not, we're gonna look for the 39 DDR, which is listed down here. Double dies, 39. We're looking for the Monticello or the Ward 5 cents, both of those to have doubling. Let's see what it is. So it is no mint mark. As you know, on the 39 nickels, the mint mark will be placed to the right of the Monticello building on the reverse. It's not there, so it's minted in Philadelphia. Let's see if there's any doubling on this whatsoever. I don't see it. You have extreme doubling, especially you'd see double serfs on these E's. It's not there. It's also on the word Monticello above that, but there is none of that there and confirm no mint mark. This could be a good sign, guys. Roll number 11, I just cracked it open, set it back down, because I believe, based on the edge, we've got a silver war nickel in this roll. I could be wrong, but that is looking just like 35% silver. And it is 1943 San Francisco silver war nickel in the box. So we've got an early one in the 30s, and now a silver war nickel in box three. Is the small city trying to make a comeback? Let's find out. Roll number 22. We're starting to find some 50s, but I bring in because we actually found another 40s nickel and it's a 1941, and this one's out of Denver. Roll 25, midpoint of the box, and yet another 39 is upon us. Will there be a mint mark? There is not. I don't see doubling with the naked eye, but we want to double check anyway. Just a little bit of damage. Gave me pause for a little, little bit on this E, but it's clearly not the double die reverse. Still, a second 1939 in the box. Not too shabby. We're on roll number 35. Got another Older Jefferson here, 1940, Philadelphia. Roll number 48, almost done with this box, but we did find another 40s nickel, a 1941, out of Philadelphia. 
Not as many 40s, but a good amount of 50s. Box is not doing too bad. Plus we got a couple of 30s in there. So maybe we could squeeze out a find or two more and we'll see how it did. So we finished the small city box. 16 finds in the 50s, no keys or semi keys. Four in the 40s, no keys or semi keys. The finds of the box, 43 San Francisco war nickel and 239 Philadelphia minted nickels as well. And then finally, we also squeeze out another 2009. It's got some rim damage, but it'll score some points. I'll get him in the stat sheet. We'll see how many points he gets, but then we'll get into my box next. So we got the small city box plugged in the stat sheet. By my record, it shows 34 points. Not a bad box whatsoever. Actually better than its average. But it would take the worst box from the big city to lose. Still can be done. It can edge it out. It's a respectable number. We'll see how it goes. A lot of 50s and finally got its first silver of the hunt. Let's get to the big city box. No further delay. I know it's circulated. I want to see if we can get three for three on Buffalo Nichols. Roll four of the big city box. Got our first 40s find. 1946 out of Philly. One year off of silver. And if I recall, that's how we started the last box for the little city as well. Well, I just can't believe it. We're on roll number five. I'm starting to slide them down and I see the top of a Buffalo nickel yet again. And this one is slick and it may not even have a mint mark that I can decipher. Let's take a look. I think there's a D mint mark. Let's put it under the scope and double check. Yeah, it's just damage, I think. I'm gonna need to nicodate this nickel and I'll be nicodating both the date area and I'll also be nicodating this back area as well. And once again, I think for fun, we'll do it on camera. We'll nicodate the back first and see if in fact there is a mint mark or if that's just damage. Let me see the tripod up and we'll get to work. So again, you should be using gloves if you're new to using Nicodate. I'm not using gloves because I'm pretty good at using it without hurting myself, but it is an acid. So I wanna remind everyone that before you apply it to anything, take precautions, but I always just put a little bit on and then I just use a screwdriver. I'm not touching the coin, I'm just touching the liquid. And then I just put it in the area that I want it to be sitting on and we'll let it do its thing for a few seconds here. What's great about Nicodate is generally it works quick and you'll be able to see if there's any mint mark whatsoever. We'll zoom in a little bit, see if we see anything. And so far as expected, I don't think it's gonna yield a mint mark, but we'll check anyway. We'll give it a few extra seconds here. You never wanna apply Nicodate twice if you can avoid it. You wanna apply it once. You wanna make sure that it does its job prior to you removing it. Removing it's easy, a little bit of water and a cloth and you're done. I'm just making sure that we get a nice even application across this entire bottom side of this nickel. Now that it's worked on its magic, I guess if you will for a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera and check for a mint mark. So as you can see, there was no mint mark. Now I didn't mind checking because there was damage. I wanted to double check and because we're gonna be nicodating the front now, it didn't matter. So we're gonna do the exact same thing to the front of the nickel. Remember, we're just putting a little tiny drop right in the area where we want it. Just like that, ever so small. And then we're just gonna move it around to where we want it to flow to. Trying not to touch the coin and not to do much else to it. And as it sits there, we're gonna zoom in and see if we can see anything. I definitely can see the 19 for sure now. I don't know if I can make out any other numbers just yet. Could be a 1917. It could be a 1917. Not quite sure yet. The fluid's already starting to darken. So we're gonna let it sit there for a few extra seconds 
Typically, 30 seconds to a minute is the most you want to go unless it's heavily worn nickel and you don't think you're going to get anything. For sake of time, we'll just dab at it real quick without even using water this time and just see if we have revealed a date. And it was as I thought. It's going to be a 1917. So the 1917 Philadelphia minted Buffalo nickel that we applied Nicodate to, and because of the condition of the coin, it doesn't really matter. It's about 50 cents to a buck. Still, we found a Buffalo nickel in the roll. That's now three straight boxes with the Buffalo, and that makes me happy. So I've got the Buffalo nickel where it goes. I do want to point out that if you guys are interested in getting Nicodate to use, you will find a link for it down below in my video description, just like you'll find a link for all of my coin roll hunting mats as well. Roll number eight, and I didn't show it, but roll number seven, I actually found a couple of really nice 1959s and their Philadelphia mint. And for those that know your nickels, it's not a semi-key date, but it's close, right at 27 million minted. So a couple of them really nice in the previous roll. You normally don't see that. But to any extent, I don't bring in for a couple of 59 nickels. I bring in because, check it out, 1949. And there is a semi-key date, a 1949 San Francisco. Figured we'd take a peek at it and see if it is that. And if not, we'll still check for a repunch mint mark. Well, there is no mint mark, so they can't check for the repunched. And it's not a 49S. It's a 49P. But I'll take it. Don't see a lot of 49 nickels in my area. And we'll add it to the collection. Roll 15 and we're gonna have a war nickel. I already know it is, I could tell by the way it looks. I saw the edge when I was putting it down and I was like, that looks like it. And as they fell, I was like, yeah, that's gotta be it. If it's not, this clip's getting deleted. <laughs> yeah, it is. Philadelphia, the big P on the back, tells you that it's a silver war nickel. Could be 43, 44, 45. And it's a 45. We'll take it, a buffalo and a silver in the box. Roll number 20, and this caught me by surprise. Look at this red buffalo nickel back there, and it looks like it has pretty good detail besides the red coloring. Oh my goodness gracious. That is a clean 1917 buffalo nickel. 1917. I guess what we're really hoping for here is just to have a mint mark, maybe make it a little more rare. Oh, the back's not as nice. And it's a 1917 Denver. Before I do anything else, I know you shouldn't clean your coins and I'm not gonna clean it, but I'm gonna run warm water over it, see if I can get a little more of this detail to pop. But I'm curious to see if that stuff comes off with a little bit of warm water or if that's part of the discoloration of the coin. Wow, that's a stunner. I'll be right back. It's only gonna be warm water, so don't freak out. All right, I don't know if the warm water really did anything to it. I will not wash this in any fashion other than running warm water over it. I will point out that it has pretty good detail. As you can see, I mean, the hairlines are visible. The feather lines are visible, a good legible date. Yeah, the back's a little worse condition, but still, we got a full rim for the most part, a little bit of ding damage right there. I'd say this is probably somewhere between, well, I think it's definitely G4, but it might be between G6 and very good eight, and maybe even very good 10. I don't think it's gonna get a fine because of the porous damage that's happened to it, the corrosiveness, but it's still, even in this condition, a $25 to $30 nickel in my opinion. You got to remember, less than 10 million of these minted. And in G4 condition, red book value is 30 bucks. Now that's going to be inflated a little bit, but at the end of the day, what a cool find. Great detail. I'm happy with that. No nicodate needed. And a really nice find. That's two for the box and 20 rolls. And we've got 30 rolls to go. Can we get a herd of buffalo? This is going to be an epic box, or at least it already has been. Just grabbed roll 24. 
another Buffalo nickel. It makes me want to pull all the rolls out and check all the ends, but there's another one right there. Don't see a date? Let's check it out. Here it is, and before I go any further, let me just do a quick peek and see if I see anything else. I don't. All right, well, let's take a look at this one. We're gonna need to nick a date it again. And I think it has a Denver Mint mark as well. It does. Another Denver Mint mark. Let me uh, get out the nick -a date It's a shame we have to nick -a date it, but I gotta know what year it is with a Denver Mint mark. Obviously, it'd be nice if it was a 13 or a 14. That'd be cool. But we'll take a look. It is definitely a variety two because the mound on the back is flat versus raised. So we know it's a variety two. We know it has a Denver Mint. Typically, they're teens when they're worn slick like this. It's very rare that I nick -a date and find it's a 1920-something. I'm not saying it won't be, and I don't want to jinx it. But, man, I can almost make that date out. I think I can make the date out. It might be a 1915 or a 1916. Before I nick -a date it, let me see if I can pull a date, and if I can, I'll let you know. And if not, we'll be nick -a dating it. Oh, the irony. It's another 1917, as you can see. So we have three Buffalo nickels in the box. The first we nickedated was a 1917 Philadelphia. The second one we didn't need to nickedate and it was a 1917 Denver. And the third one, we only needed to nickedate the front and it's also a 1917 Denver. Three 1917 Buffalo nickels in the box. One, fantastic, two, Need a nick -a date Let's find more. Roll 32. It's not a Buffalo, but it is a 1941 nickel out of Philly. So we'll take that one. And uh, this one has uh, seen better days. Figure we take a look at it together. 1983. Dinged up, banged up, cleaned up, trashed up. Back to work, buddy. Roll 44. 1941. Damaged and out of Philly. Same roll. 1946. Out of Denver, I believe. Yes, it is. Still the same roll, and why not? Three in the same roll. Another 40s nickel. 1948 Philly. We'll take it. Three nickels. Worth keeping in the same roll. We finished box three of the big city, small city battle, and uh, it's probably a no contest. To make it official though, we got 15 from the 50s. No key dates, but there's a few 52 Denvers in there and in great condition, they're worth a lot more. These aren't in great condition. I did and will separate the nice 59s that I found in here. Hard to find them like that, especially out of Philadelphia. We ended up with uh, two, four, six of the coins from the 40s, not including the Silver War nickel we also found in that box. 1945 out of Philadelphia. We got three Buffalo nickels. Two I had to nick a date. One's a 1917 Philadelphia. One's a 1917 Denver. And the star of the box is this really good detail. Yeah, it's got some a little bit of corrosion and some discoloration, but it's still a 1917 Denver minted Buffalo nickel with detail. Clear date. I'll take it. We also found two 2009s, both Denver as usual. One's in really good shape, so I'm happy about that. Don't get those in great shape too often. Three coins I'll check against my album. 62, 73D, and an 84D. I think it's a no-brainer that this box beat the small city box, but let me get this in the stat sheet, get it plugged in the computer, get a final printout, and show you how it wrapped up. Got the stats in the stat sheet and is definitely official. The small city scored 34 points on its last box. Pretty respectable. The big city... 54 blew it out of the water with those three buffaloes and a silver. At the end of the day, the big city bank was just too much for the small city bank. 46 and a half to 31 and a half points. Pretty much a route. We averaged almost two buffaloes per box in the big city banks and a silver coin. So definitely, definitely, based on the small sample set, I would say it's better to hunt boxes in big cities.
Now all you guys gotta do is be sure to leave a comment on this video and Robinhood Coins will once again pull two winners for this challenge. Be sure you're subscribed to his channel so you can catch the latest videos he puts out, especially the ones that announce the winners. He's gonna have two winners for this round. You're either gonna score an American Silver Eagle or another Walking Liberty Half Dollar. Really cool prizes. And again, I wanna thank Robinhood Coins for the challenge. I had fun. Wish we'd had better finds in the small city banks, but then again, this is corn roll hunting and you never know what's gonna be in your box until you hunt it. If you enjoyed this nickel box city battle challenge with Robinhood Coins and the giveaways, please give the series a thumbs up as well as the video. And as always, my friends, happy hunting and thanks for watching.